Morning, everyone. How are we doing tonight? Good. Okay, great. My name is Lauren Edwards, and I am the program coordinator for UAB Institute for Arts and Medicine. I very quickly want to welcome you to the final performance of Raising Our Voices, Stories of Cancer Told Through Movement, Music, and Voice. I would also like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, um, the Community Foundation of Greater Birmingham, the Women's Breast Health Fund, Forge Breast Cancer Center, and the National Endowment for the Arts. I'm now gonna to welcome to the stage, Ms. Suzanne Costello, co-artistic director of Stuart Pimsler Dance and Theater and co-director and visionary behind Raising Our Voices. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for being here tonight. Um, it's a joy for us uh, on so many levels to be here. Um, first of all, I haven't been able to work in the theater for a year and a half, so this is my first time back, which feels fantastic. Um, and also, because I am the artistic co-director of Stuart Pimsler Dance and Theater, we're based in Minneapolis. We are a, a touring company, so we primarily travel uh, throughout the US as well as abroad. And um, in so doing, I've been here in Birmingham. I believe this is my fifth time working here. Um, so I've come to know your community a little bit and love it very much. Um, uh, I particularly think you have fantastic restaurants, right? I haven't had a bad meal. I'm like, I'm coming back just to eat. Uh, <laughs> But it, it, um, we have had a, a wonderful time creating this project, although it was a bumpy start. Um, it was funded by the National Endowment for the Arts to be done last year. And we were here for two weeks and we had just completed the final rehearsal when everything shut down due to COVID. So although everything had been at the precipice of being presented, we couldn't do so. And as we all know, the world changed. Right, and, and it's still changing as a result of that epidemic um, in sad and, and, and very many difficult ways, challenging ways. Um, amidst that though, um, Kimberly Kirkland, who's the, the director of the Institute for Arts and Medicine here, um, was really strident about wanting to bring this project back to the stage. And so doing, we were in conversation and eventually, of course, it was decided that we could come back into theaters and that I would come back and reconstruct um, the performance. Um, the cast you'll see tonight is primarily the cast we worked with back in, in uh, 2020, uh, with a few exceptions. Some people weren't able to join us due to uh, other engagements or they moved. Um, however, a, a large percentage of the cast was able to join us, so that was fantastic. But the most remarkable thing about the performance you'll see tonight and the people on the stage is that the majority of them have never performed before much less set uh, foot on a stage. So that's remarkable. Um, probably more remarkable than that is that they all have had some experience with cancer. Some of them are living with cancer. Some of them are more recently diagnosed. Some have survived a diagnosis. Um, some have lost someone to cancer. So they've all been intimately affected by the disease. And they have been willing to step up and decide to take part in this project and share their experience. And that's quite vulnerable. Um, illness can make you very vulnerable. And they've been willing to do that, share it not only with myself and with the other performers, but ultimately with you, the audience. And we have a live streaming audience. So with the live stream audience as well. So they are to be commended on, on a number of levels for being incredibly brave and, and also just very willing and, um, and open with themselves. And, and I've had such a wonderful time being the shepherd of their, of their uh, experiences. Um, we will come back at the end of the performance and share the stage with all the performers and have just a few moments to talk with you, um, take your questions or comments or, uh, anything you wanna ask about the process or about the individuals. I think it really, we've been doing this as a, as a company since the mid eighties because we feel it completes the sort of communication circle rather than 
give you a performance and leave. We really want to complete the, the, the conversation by having the, the time with the audience and to hear from you, which of course always impacts us in, in really important ways. So if you can stay for a few moments after, that would be lovely. Um, we will take questions and you'll get to meet the performers those of those that you don't know, I imagine some of you know some of them. Um, so we, we invite you to do that. And so now I would just like to say, please enjoy this evening's performance and we will talk with you at the end of Raising Our Voices.
sweet. My life was so sweet. Delicious, really. Like my mom's apple pie. Everything was going so good. But then it all came to a halt. My doctor, she was tall, with a sort of athletic build. And she always wore these brown boots. And they had this big heel that just exude confidence. That's my fine doctor. <laughs> Always waiting. I would be sitting there in this skimpy gown, feeling the air through its many openings. I would be freezing, so I'd walk around and around, waiting and waiting and She appeared. She greeted me with a warm smile. Then she took my hands and she sat me down. She looked me right in my eyes. The results are in. It's 
cancer. I've got a secret to share. It's about one of my relationships, about my doctor and I. Maybe it's not really a secret, but it's more of a desire. I want my doctor and my relationship to be beautiful. Just as my doctor orders blood tests and bone scans of my body, I want my doctor to scan me to survey my spirit as well as my flesh. My doctor doesn't need to love me nor suffer with me. I just like a little bit of bonding, some brooding, to survey my soul as well as my other body parts and to use their science as a kind of poetry rather than as a piece of machinery. Bottom line, I want my doctor to enjoy me. I want to be a good story for them. And in return, I promise to be as interesting and revealing as possible. <laughs>
too much. I don't know what to do. I know, I know. I just, I just want you to be comfortable. Comfortable? I'm talking about my life. I need to get this right. I understand. It's messy and, and there isn't a script to memorize. It's too much. I don't want to be weighted down with this. You're in it. You're too far along. You're in it. There's got to be more to it than this. It's just got to be. You, you are not able to process everything right now, but can you just breathe? Can you just take a breath? I don't think you're hearing me. You can't be. You can't be. You seem angry. I am angry. This is my life. I am angry. I just want you to feel safe. Come on now, this is far along. Wrong. Why should I trust you? We've been together a long time. That's why you should trust me. I think you know it all. I don't know what to do. I know. I just want you to be comfortable. I just want to get it right. This is messy. And there's no script. I don't want to be weighted down. Breathe. Breathe. I don't think you're hearing me. That's right. No, no, turn. Look at me. Look at me. Now breathe. Take a breath. Now what? You seem angry. I am angry. This isn't working. Do you have to be so angry? This isn't working. I know. It's not working, but we'll figure it out together. Together. We'll figure it out. We will. You're in it, but I'm in it with you.
So you see, we're having lunch at a little place close by, a little cafe. I'm sure you all know which one I'm talking about. And we've just finished yoga and we're so hungry. Um, this has become somewhat of a ritual for us. Not the yoga, of course, but the food and conversation. And whether by chance or circumstance, certainly not by invitations, we are a club. And I've decided we need to call this the Bosom Buddy Club. So as we're looking over the menu and, you know, we're making gestures that, you know, we're used to making. Probably other tables are noticing our gestures and we're doing odd things and because we're talking about us. But, um, you know, I'm some, one of us says, really? And we laugh and say, oh, yeah. Somebody else, maybe we'll do this and we'll say, yeah, really? And then, gee, I forgot. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, that's right. See, that's part of this too. We all have to fill in each other's sentences, finish the conversations, because we are all part of this club, the Bosom Buddy Club. And as I look around, I notice our waiter is trying to come over to our table, but he doesn't know exactly how to approach us after he's been observing our behavior at the table. And he says, is there anything else I can get y'all? And we all say, no, thanks. We're okay because we're all part of the Bosom Buddies. My friends, our friends, Bosom Buddies all. Stay abreast, keep abreast, don't let them fall. Archetypal, conical, slender and round. Asymmetric, athletic, smooth and sound. East, west, side set, close set to. Teardrops, two bells, how do you do? So many shapes, so many foods. I got mine checked, how about you? We are good somebody's. I was, I was sitting there in a row of five women. I was sitting in front of my bathroom mirror. 
I said to her, just ignore me if I start to cry. I looked up to him and said, a lot is going to fall. My kids, well, my students. My children, scientists. They would always tease me and say, Mrs. Mack, it's time to scrunch the crunch. Would tell me, Amma, no gray, silky, and black. Because it was long and curly and long. <laughs> Did I mention it was long and blonde? Yeah, until my 30s, it was down to my knees. Long, straight, curly, silky, and blonde. And black. It was <laughs> straight, long, silky, it was curly, and black. And it was blonde. Yeah, it was straight, it was long, silky, and it was it was it was black. curly and it was blonde. I know this sounds vain, but it, it was like my signature, and people notice if it's gone. My head lent to my personality. It was a part of the multiple roles I played, and you know it was my crowning glory. So when people say that it's it's just hair. They don't get it. And, and there are people that say that, that it's just hair. And they would tell me, Does, is it so important? I was sitting there in a row of five women watching them get their hair cut and styled and, and dyed, but not me. And I was sitting in front of the mirror, just reflecting on the light on the razor and watched a part of me falling away. And a part of me fell away.
in every family, there is the baby. You know the one, the last born, the most favored, the one who can do no wrong, even if they break mama's favorite vase. My sister Joan was the baby of our family. Actually, she was one of two. She was a twin. Her twin sister Jean was the outgoing one, quick to laugh, never met a stranger. Joan was quiet and sweet and definitely in the shadows, but they were inseparable. They dressed alike, they shared the same room through college. Their first job was even at the same movie theater. And even though they were twins, Joan was always the baby of the family because she was born last. The baby of the family is forever young. But sometimes the clock's numbers are out of order. Chronology loses its power. And sometimes the baby doesn't outlive us. And we are left baby-less. And when there is no longer the baby, who are we?
Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we're now going to have a brief talk back with the cast and the director of Raising Our Voices. If you're on the live stream and you have a question that you would like asked, drop it in the chat and we'll get to that. Another chair, another chair, another chair. So is this, yeah, this is on. Well, thank you everyone for, for being here and, uh, and witnessing this performance. Um, it was fantastic to have them be able to share it with you. Um, we just want to have a few moments to uh, allow you to ask a question, make a comment um, about either the performance, the process, or, you know, whatever might be of interest. Um, so if you have a question, maybe just do that thing you do in school and put your head, hand up, you know? Yes. Uh, Say it one more time. I'm sorry. Oh, was it difficult to live through some of those moments you'd already you had previously lived through? Anybody want to speak to that? Meredith, Nancy, yes, Carla. In the beginning, it started off to be a bit difficult, but as the process went on, it became easier because I felt like I was sharing my story to inspire someone else. So it became easy then to, to do it and to open up and to be vulnerable. Someone else? Laguna? Hmm? Um, was it difficult to relive the moments that you'd gone through that were different? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure any anguishing moment to relive is not easy. But it, this particular one, which we go through, or I went through, or I'm going through, for me, it's very, very live in me. And I have learned in the totality to accept it and go through it. That's it. That's what I would say to acceptance is the one which just helps us to do in a better way, good way. Who composed the music? Um, well, most of the recorded sound is listed in the program from different composers. However, um, some of the, the music was original. Um, the song that was sung at the opening and later on as well, I wrote um, and uh, collaborated with one of our company members in terms of creating the music. So her name is Jen Prey. So Jen and I created that song. Um, and then the guitar piece and the violin piece that were played um, as sort of transitional parts of the performance were done by two different artists in this community as a variation on that music. One is Henry Scott and the other one is Haley Brown, um, the violin. So those were original. Um, the other pieces are by composers that are listed in the program. Questions from the live audience. <laughs> yes. So give me an example. Of, like symbolism? Yeah, of what you're seeing as symbolism. So, Mm -hmm. Great. 
So the question is, is there a reason that we use symbolism so much in the performance as opposed to maybe just telling the story directly? And she pointed to the um, concept of some of the movements seen symbolic and, and then ultimately these red pieces of costume as also as symbols. Um, I'll let the cast talk to some of that. I can tell you about the red. Um, as a director, um, I felt it was important um, throughout the process of creating this piece that of course we're acknowledging these stories um, that have to do with the, how cancer has impacted the people here on the stage with us um, and to communicate their experience in either a personal or more universal way. Um, however, I, I feel that it's very important that cancer doesn't define the person. It's, a, it's one part of their um, identity, but it's not everything. And yet it is the, the reason we came together is everyone had had a cancer experience. So I felt the red for me was a connectivity that everybody has this in their life in some fashion. And it connects this group of people who created this um, performance, but it's not the only thing. They're, they're not defined by their illness. This is, you know, philosophically for me, very important, both in performance and also in our world of healthcare that we're not defined by a diagnosis. Now, anybody wanna to speak to the symbolism she was speaking to? Yes. Good evening, my name is Brendan Price. And what I've learned over the last few years is that there's power in being, being lean of speech. And this production was lean of speech. And the first time we gathered, we sat in a circle and everyone shared their cancer story. And from that circle sprouted movements, words, songs. And, you know, one thing I've learned over the years is that the happy, mad, scared, sad sits somewhere in our body. And we accessed that place over the last two weeks. Question? Yeah. Oh. Um, so I, I um, I, oh, here. I'm a manager, um, Why didn't you join us? Ah, <laughs> um, but, uh, just in all seriousness, as a performer who's been training for years, I think it's incredibly effective and moving. And y'all taught me so much within just the span of an hour mm -hmm. of how performing isn't just hard work, but it's heart work. Mm -hmm. And like this mm -hmm. sense of just being so vulnerable mm -hmm. and open with your stories like that takes immeasurable courage. And like I honor every single being that can make this happen. Um, just thank you for sharing your story because it did, it did a lot more than you could have ever imagined. <laughs> thank you. I'm going to try to capsulize Devin, what Devin said just for our live stream audience because sometimes it's hard for them to hear. But um, this audience member who happens to be a, a theater major here at UAB commented that um, he learned so much from watching this performance, even though he's been training, um, because he was saying it's beyond hard work, it's heart work. And he was very moved by everyone sharing their stories. So thanks, Devin. Other question? Yes. We have quite a few in the chat. So if okay. Questions, please jump in. Um, what were some of the healing aspects of being involved with this performance and experience? What were some of the healing aspects of being involved with this performance? Um, I'm Deidre Sanderson, one of the cancer survivors. And I think the camaraderie and the um, almost a group support group, but not a traditional support group, but the um, almost a group of family, the trust that we've we've gained from each other. And it's going to be different tomorrow when we don't 
come to practice for two hours and we're I'm, or I'm gonna miss that and um just just the feeling of trust and just the togetherness that we formed it's it's just been amazing and that's been healing in and of itself and, oh and also the the movement and the the um getting around I'm not used to a lot of that so that's been amazing in a physical in, in a physical sense uh, I just would like to continue with what the young gentleman said there and what Deidre said. I'm Suguna Swaminathan. I've been fighting cancer for the past six and a half years. And um, <clears throat> when uh, this was announced, re they said that we are going to do it this year back because uh, my situation was slightly different from what it was from 20, not 2020 to 2021. And I mentioned it in the family. I said, look, will I be able to do it? Will I be able to do any movement at all? Because I had tremendous issues in, in that aspect in my legs. The first day I came with a walking stick. This story I would always repeat in my life wherever I go. <laughs> I came with a stick and I in fact mentioned to Suzanne saying that, look, I love to move, I love to dance, but then I don't think I can, I'll be able to do it. She, she didn't say anything. She said, yes, okay, we'll take care of it. That's it. Next day onwards, no stick on me. <laughs> that, was the, that was the influence and the encouragement and the motivation what, that came from the group, entire group and the director and the school. And it was amazing I, for myself that I, I was able to do it. And I hope that this influence will continue. I don't want to go get back to my sticks again tomorrow. That's very clear to me. Um, I just, um, as far as the, the, I think the question was about the, the healing experience, if I recall. But um, I just want to say that that I mean, there is the camaraderie of it. There is also really the aspect of shared story too. And, you know, other people saying things that I actually couldn't express myself. Um, and I wanna say that the that dance scene with the chairs, I mean, that's like, that's not anything that I ever said to anybody, but wow, does that resonate with, with all that kind of, goes on with it. Um, and, you know, there's something really special too about being with people where, you know, we could also, some of it was really fun and really fun movement and exercises and where you didn't have to share your story because everybody knew the story. So you didn't have to tell them because they knew how you were feeling. And so, but I mean, it was, it was an amazing experience. What was the backstory on the circus number? It seemed so playful and carefree in contrast to the context. So, and interesting that the name of the music is, uh, yeah. Um, so the question is, what, what's the backstory on the circus uh, piece? It seemed so playful. Um, Nancy, you want to talk about that? Do you want to tell us? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. My name is Nancy McLemore. Um, <clears throat> circus. When you have cancer, it's a, it's a very surreal thing to hear those words. And uh, at times you just, you, people will see you in the grocery store and they'll say, oh, I heard you have cancer. You look so good. And sometimes you know you don't look good. You don't feel good. Sometimes you try to put on a happy face and go on about your business and people don't know you have cancer until they see the drains hanging off of your um, body or the port coming out of your skin or any number of the lack of hair or the wig that you've got on. But there's something to, uh, you know, I never wanted to feel pathetic or, oh, I'm so sorry you have cancer. No, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. People would say, you look so brave. You're doing so good. I just did what I was told to do and tried to get up and do the next thing. And uh, sometimes you just want to forget you have cancer. So I guess circus, we all have to find the fun and the fun moments during the horrible time. Yeah. Uh, how was this beautiful group of people put together? 
How is this beautiful group of people put together? Well, um, I'll tell you my, my story about that. Um, so some number of years ago, um, I've, I've come in, and done projects here at um, UAB and I've worked with my partner and friend, Kimberly Kirkland, who you may know is the uh, founder and the head of the Institute for Arts and Medicine. And so I've come here to do workshops and then our company performed here some number of years ago. And um, so along the way, um, I had done a, a, a project in Minneapolis where we're based um, with Gilda's Club with people impacted by cancer. And Kimberly saw a, a video of that and, and really wanted to have something similar uh, done here. And um, we, we decided that we were gonna go for that. So um, between Kimberly and myself, we wrote a grant for the National Endowment. We, we came up with this idea that we're gonna come and do this thing. Okay, so that's really a nice idea. Here's the problem. You never know if anyone's gonna actually join you, you know? So it's, it's like a hard sell. Okay, you, you wanna talk about cancer and do movement. I mean, it's like, you might as well just, you know, pack it up then, you know, it's like, it's not a big sale. So in order to kind of bring people on board, um, we did sort of informational workshops uh, in different areas and sort of to inform people about the project and to invite them to participate. And luckily, many of these people were at one of those informational meetings and decided to join. But I will tell you, it's not easy to like sign up for something like this because, you know, it's, it's you know, as you said, it's, it's vulnerable, it's people, you know, it's, it's intimate. And in many cases, people have never performed. So, you know, the, the, uh, to me, it's like, always amazing that people actually do this, even though I've done it for a long time, it's incredible. And I think Martha needs to tell you a story. <laughs> okay, Trita may want to share the story with me. Um, a mutual friend of ours had called, uh, we had, I had sent it on Facebook and this mutual friend named Nancy had also, she was gonna be with us last year, but this year she's out of town. So she calls, I guess, Trina first. So she, Nancy calls me up and, and I had just, we, we had had our uh, mastectomies right about the same time I was going through chemo. She's like, I have tickets to see this cancer show with people sharing their stories about cancer. So Nancy, Martha and I showed up to see the show two years ago in January. But it wasn't a show. <laughs> so you see, we come in and we're asking to, we had planned an afternoon with the women, girls, whatever. We were going to go to see a production at Alice Stevens. It was a gorgeous day. We were going to have lunch at the Pita Stop. And then we're going to go to the Homewood Library to, uh, for book club. We had yoga first, too. Yeah, well, well y'all did, I did. But <laughs> so anyway, um, we we come in the front door and uh, we said, oh, hey, we're rushing in. We're so excited. Like, where's where's the production taking place? And they said, uh, there wasn't anybody in the lobby and there wasn't any signs up. And so they said, well, you're on stage in there on the left. And we said, no, no, we're not on stage. We're just we're just here to watch a production. I said, no, you really need to go get on the stage. So we walked in. Yeah, and, and that's when we realized it was actually a cast call, not, <laughs> not because we were, we still didn't get it. When they said that you can join them on the stage, we're like, that's an odd production. But anyway, so, but we actually, the three of us would never have stepped forward to share our stories because, you know, that seems like such a big thing. And you really think, well, but my story is just a little story. And so, it, you know, it was very, we were very, we had so much fun once it started that we were like, okay, we're staying. <laughs> so afterwards, we did go to the pizza stop and have lunch. And we said, <laughs> what have we gotten ourselves into? We like, I don't think we're really going to do this, but you know, and then I think y'all came up, y'all followed us 
probably up there. I don't know. But but anyway, they came. Oh, we're so excited. You're going to take part in the play. We said, like, we didn't know this, you know. But um, needless to say, the book club was canceled that day. <laughs> Might have had a few cocktails for lunch. <laughs> but Trina and I probably never would have met if it hadn't been for Nancy bringing us together. And it's been such a wonderful experience. Some of you have um, had a moment to introduce yourselves, but I would love uh, for the cast to each, uh, their names obviously are in the program, for, but for you to know who everybody is. And if you want to just, if you want to mention your, what brought you to the project, what, what your experience with cancer is, you can do that. You don't have to. Let's, let's go down this way and then we'll run it from Elizabeth. Hi, my name's Heather Klopchen and I've been an artist with Stuart Pimsler Dance and Theater since 2010. Um, and in terms of uh, people in my life that have uh, had cancer, I had an uncle pass away from brain cancer many years ago, and more recently had a good friend and choreographer that I work with um, battle leukemia and is doing well. In fact, he had a show open this weekend as well back in Minnesota. So, um, and just a privilege to work with this wonderful group. Yes, thank you. Ask him on else. Hi, I'm Deidre Sanderson, and I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer um, in October of 2017. So I had my four year cancer anniversary um, this past week. So, four years, um, I'm no evidence of disease right now. So, all is, all is well. Thank you. <laughs> um, cancer is something that runs very strong in my family. Uh, my dad was going through treatment for colon cancer while I was going through treatment, which was kind of challenging for the family. Um, also, I, since we left off last, last um, March, I have had six female friends pass away from cancer, nothing to do with COVID. Um, and you know, that it's changed kind of the, the way that I've, I've looked at this performance and um, it's, it's just, um, you know, grief is a different, different um, emotion that has been brought in for me. So it's, um, anyway, that's. Uh, I'm Suguna Swaminathan. As I said earlier, I was diagnosed with uh, stage 3C ovarian cancer in 2015 and uh, been undergoing treatment in and out. And what is it is that I fight? Is it going to be me or the disease? So first I'm a fighter, then a survivor. And with all the support which I received, I have been receiving and I am receiving from my family and uh, friends. I think I'll fight still ahead. Hi, my name is Trina Feig. I was uh, diagnosed with invasive lobular breast cancer in um, the summer of 2019. Um, and I also have. Um, lots of friends who have had cancer, relatives who've had cancer, and two friends in the past couple of years who've passed away from cancer. I'm Eileen Brill, and um, my connection to cancer is my father was diagnosed with uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia about six years before he died in 2013. And uh, one thing about him is that he lived his life like he was immortal, <laughs> like, um, it was very strange, but it was very much in denial. But then in the last six months, he kind of went downhill. But um, I also had a cousin who had breast cancer and she died very young at around 50 that metastasized. And most recently in May, uh, another cousin by marriage has been diagnosed with a severe form of brain cancer and has one year to live, <laughs> but hopefully maybe it'll get better. <laughs> A professional. She was a professional dancer, and so I have like a very 
um, close allegiance to her, sort of. Hi, I'm Avery Vitam, and my connection to cancer is my grandmother. One of my grandmothers had colon cancer, and I actually have Crohn's disease. And through this process of this creative process and with everyone, I feel like I've deepened my connection with her. And my name is Nazma Chaudhuri, and I'm a breast cancer survivor for past 11 years. And I'm of course cancer free for now. And uh, my connection with this group is as they advertised and then just walked in the stage and, <laughs> and performed today. So, uh, and uh, that's that is uh, this uh, group and this movement, whole movement, is just so influenced so amazingly that it's in the head. Actually, it never goes away. That uh, this happy moment, I would say, this is the happy moment. Something sticks in your brain and never goes that happy moment away. It's like another happy moment that in your memories memory area of your brain is just there, you know? So, and um, the group is amazing and they are so supportive and their stories touch, is each of us touches each of us, our stories and the bondage and friendship and uh, the strong willed enforcement that's, that's the thing that we're gonna believe on forward. And the red symbol is everybody has their different uh, way of expression. For me is that a light in front of you, a bright shiny light in the tunnel and your uh, red empowerment and a strong will and a bright life. And so, I want to live lively, not in a moment of depression, as, as I say. I know many survivors are suffering and they are also uh, not get the support. You know, as you saw that our uh, part of our performance has that moment that how it works in our heart when you get diagnosed and the day you diagnose, you are blank that what I need to do. And when I was diagnosed, my son was only 10 years old. And it was for, not for me that I was worried. I was worried for him because he just thought that his mother will not gonna survive. And for a 10 year old and what's going on in his heart, how we know even, we do not know that sometimes we do not know even we are so close that what he's thinking, but in his mind that mom is not gonna be survived. And he goes to school, he, he doesn't express his pain. And uh, someday his teacher realized that this boy was not like this before quiet. What happened? And when the teacher, sweet teacher, of course, that how the teacher actually knows every student, right? So, and then she asks that, is there anything that you're gonna tell me that you are not participating with all of this class and everything, is it something? And then he mentioned that, yes, my mom has breast cancer and the teacher called me and then teacher said, now I know that why he is not before as he was always lively, social and sporty. And that broke my heart that my son is not expressing me actually at home that he is suffering, but he's, he's suffering. That suffering actually killed myself, my inside that I'm not afraid of my disease at that point. At that point, I was afraid that how his mental well being. And that was not a happy moment at that time. And I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nina. Um, Stuart Pimser actually came to UAB. Me and Matthew are students here. 
and my roommate made me do it. <laughs> um, it was it was a couple of months, or like a year and a few months after my mare had passed away from ovarian cancer, and before that, she survived breast cancer. I'm Elizabeth Vanderkamp, and I have a brother um, who's living, thriving with multiple myeloma, and he's been doing that for 20 years. So in honor of him, I came. Thanks, Bestie. Uh, hi, my name is Matthew Kelly. I'm a student here at UAB, and what brought me to this project was Miss Suzanne over here, Miss Queen. Um, and also my grandmother who passed of breast cancer. She died a year before I was born. Um, and also my really good friend Allison is going through breast cancer right now. I'm Mary Fauche. I'm a retired dancer and I lost my mom back in 1994. And I joined this project because I believe in arts and medicine. I think arts are medicine. Singing and music and dancing and moving and telling your story is a healing thing. Hi, I'm Sophia Deal. I've been working with Suzanne and Stuart Pinsler Dance and Theater for the past couple of years. Um, my father passed away from sarcoma in 2019. And it's just been incredible to be with this cast, both in 2020 and the second time around. Hello, my name is Brendan Price. I survived my mother, Rachel, my wife, Jana, and in the last six months, my magical friends back in Orlando, baby Addie and Eduardo. I, I did this for them tonight. I'm um, Meredith McLemore. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2019. Right, Lauren? I have to check my twin sister out there. She remembers the dates. Um, and got into this project. Um, and then we, you know, COVID shut down. And my father was fighting uh, multiple myeloma at the same time. And he passed in May of 2020. So I'm Martha Council. And uh, my mother died of cancer, my brother died of cancer, and I'm a cancer survivor uh, five years out, breast cancer. I'm Miriam Reed, and um, I became involved with this incredible project because of the death of my sister, Joan, who I talked about this evening. And um, this has just been the most wonderful experience being with this incredible cast. I'm Melissa Turnage, and my mother, although was a um, cancer survivor, also a dancer, and I lost two very close friends within the last two months to cancer. I'm Kimberly Kirkland. Um, I lost my aunt uh, to cancer. I also have a cousin who is a, a colon cancer survivor. And um, I just want to say, I am often asked, what is arts and medicine? And so it's a, it's a very quiet thing. It's a, it's a private thing. We don't sell tickets to shows typically. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of people who can come see what we do because it's at the bedside. It's in very quiet moments. But I'm so thankful that you all have been able to see this because this is what we talk about. We talk about community building. We talk about expression through arts. We talk about bearing witness to stories. And, um, and so I just um, thank you so much for supporting this project and being here. I'm Nancy McLemore, and I uh, am a breast cancer survivor of uh, five years. My name is Carla Youngblood, and I came to this project because I myself is a breast cancer survivor. Um, I've had uh, a, a bit of experience with cancer, although not myself, but my my father was a, had colon cancer and then uh, eventually prostate cancer. Um, my mother had thyroid cancer when she was 21 um, and survived that. Um, my brother-in-law died five years ago from um, colon cancer. And I lived in New York during the AIDS epidemic. So um, I, I can't count the number of colleagues I left lost um, in the 80s to AIDS. 
um, but very prominent was uh, Stuart's and my um, scene designer who was um, a mentor to us artistically. Um, and his name was Ronald Kajawara. Um, and he was the design director of Vogue magazine at the time, but he designed sets for us. And uh, he, he died of AIDS in 1991. Um, so I've had those experiences. Lauren, I know we're, we're getting low on time here. Should we take one more? What do you, There's no more. No more. Any more out here? Everybody's good. Okay, I have a question for you. Um, how many people here in the audience have been impacted by cancer? Yeah, so we're we're all part of the same. Uh, we're, you could be up here. <laughs> you could have joined us, but uh, I think it speaks to why I think this was important to do a performance that highlights it because it is something that impacts so very many of us um, in so many ways. Um, I have to, um, before I close, thank um, UAB uh, Alice Stevens. Um, and our crew, our sound man, Danny. Our light, light guy, Terry, where's my, our line designer? Oh, there he is. <laughs> our stage manager, Kevin, where are you hiding? Lauren Edwards, who works with Kimberly. And most importantly, Kimberly Kirkland for making this project happen. Thank you. Please notice on the back of your programs, uh, the cast helped compile a list of resources for those um, dealing with cancer. And I think there's some really good information on the back of there. Follow the arts and medicine program here at UAB and thank you for coming.